Hello, <laughs> hello everyone. Oh, we probably just made everybody dizzy right off the bat there. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CNC with Dave Gatton Show. Uh, I've got uh, my usual sidekick, uh, Avi and Sweta, uh, here with me tonight, who's going to help me watch the chat, answer questions, and also show off his newfangled toy, tool, whatever you want to yeah. call it. And I got a message earlier, and uh, Mr. Pasuelo from all the way from New Zealand, or I like to say he's the guy from the future because it's Sunday there. Uh, he's uh, going to join us tonight. So welcome, Peter. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Well, uh, I'm glad you're here. We'll, we'll give you all the hard questions. <laughs> I'll try and make something up. <laughs> there you go. But uh, anyway, thank you all for being here. We already got about 30 folks out there hanging out with us. Uh, before we get started, uh, we're going to just kind of do a question and answer thing, and we'll probably do that uh, after we get Javi to show his new thing here. Uh, but I did want to once again mention to keep uh, everybody, please keep uh, Michael Murray's daughter McKenna in her thoughts and prayers. And there's a GoFundMe. Uh, if you don't know, she's battling some cancer. I, she had her surgery the other day, and I think it went pretty well. But they can still use some help and, and thoughts and prayers and all that stuff. So the link to the GoFundMe is down at the bottom of the show description stuff. So if you're so inclined, uh, toss a few bucks their way. I'll appreciate it, and I know they would appreciate it too. So um, let's see what else. The other uh, little bit of news, if y'all follow on Facebook or in the Facebook groups and stuff, well, I guess you would have had to have been in a Gatton C CNC Facebook group, because I think that's the only place I put it. But uh, I'm going to try to add a page. You know, we, can, we answer, you know, we talked about this the other night. We kind of answer some of the same questions over and over and over. So I'm going to try to put together, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, a help information page or a question and answer page or something but it's going to be a page on my website where you can go and i'm going to try to get it set up where it's got categories like for example spindles or vectric maybe one of the topic or you know the categories uh just stuff like that and for an example uh i'm going to be putting links to uh, not just my videos, but anybody's video that I've seen that that I know can help folks, you know, get that question answered. So, for example, if if uh, somebody wants to know how to tram, uh, you'd probably find a link there to the the video that Peter did because he's done one using the, the stick thing. Uh, there'll be a link to the one that Mark Lindsay did because he did uh, a little bit more elaborate thing with some indicators and stuff like that uh but that's that's just kind of an example uh of what i hope to have and right now there's n i haven't even got it that page live yet because I, right now i'm just kind of taking notes watching going back and re-watching some videos um uh, i've already got a few written down here but i'll try to get a, a enough to put on there and then we'll just constantly add to it and like I say, I'll try to keep it where it's organized, where when you go on there, you'll be able to go to a certain category and then look at the questions that are in that category. And then there'll be a link to either a YouTube video or maybe somebody's blog or something like that. And just as I say that, we lose Peter. <laughs> but uh, anyway... So look for that coming. Uh, you know, like I said, and don't get me wrong, it's not that I mind answering the same questions over and over, but a lot of times, you know, you may have, you may be where you need an answer right now. And, um, you know, if you can go to that page, find the, the same kind of issue or something that you're having and go right to somebody's video, um, and, and watch it real quick and, and get an answer because 
there's probably not any kind of issue that somebody hadn't already had either me or Javi or yep. Mark Lindsay or Peter or, you know, you know, tons of other folks that, uh, especially if all the folks that have, uh, building the, uh, Gatton CNC. Uh, okay. I guess Peter, <laughs> Peter, okay. I hope we didn't scare him off. Uh, let's see. I keep my me just okay. Um. All right, so that, that's really all I had. Javi, did you have anything you wanted to talk about before we got before we uh, get started? No, no, I can't uh, can't think of anything uh, at the moment. Uh, uh, my my show will be on hiatus for uh, the usual one or two weeks because as I'll be uh, up on the uh, up in the property working. Uh, cutting trees uh but uh, short of that nothing uh nothing new okay all right well what uh what hobby's planning on showing us tonight kind of ties in with what he did last night on his show so if you didn't see that hobby you want to kind of do Ab a little, uh, summary of what you did absolutely i'll be happy to uh let's see we have here uh, for those of you that watched the show uh, last night, I made a uh, a replica, if you will, of the uh, Andrew Klein, uh, or as it's called, the Rockler Fold Up Miter Dado Jig, something of of that uh, sort. So you'll notice here you'll have if uh, if you had a table saw and bought that uh, that. Uh, specialized saw and dado set you could make these uh and it's one board and it turns into a uh well it turns into whatever you design but i i just made a box this is a scrap piece over here so and uh you'll notice uh my first test piece i have little gaps here and that's because last night i designed it for a uh, three quarter inch thick board and this is clearly a uh, piece of melanin that's somewhere like 0.65 or or something. I have another piece of melanin. Is it melanin or melamine? I never know. I think it's two M's. Uh, the uh, I have another piece of melamine on the machine, and uh, if you'll bear with the dizziness, I will uh, take you over there and show you what I'm. What, okay. Uh, now. Yeah. I watched your show last time, but basically you only need two bits to do that, correct? That's right. B uh, all it is is nothing more than a V-bit. In fact, where did I put the... Here it is. For those of you that, that uh, saw the show, here is the uh, actual uh, outline of the piece, and it folds over, and uh, I mean, my my scissor work needs help but with a precision cnc and a little adaptability you've got yourself a miter and this is uh, what's happening you're looking at a cross section all it is is pocket holes one here and one here and a v-bit the only caveat if you will is that this v-bit has to be the exact width that you that you you have to know the width of the v-bit because in the in this case, I designed it for a half inch wide V bit, which is a quarter and a quarter on the on the either half, because you have a wall here, not on this side, but on this side you have a wall. Uh, if you want to see the full explanation, uh, my show is available, and you can see all the details of the math involved. Um, yeah, if you like, and I'll yeah, I'll check go ahead and show if you want to see how he how he drew the vectors and stuff to make make this happen. Yeah, and then uh, so uh, shall I show him the uh, my my new toy? Yeah, we probably kept them in suspense long enough. Let's. Right. Uh, so I purchased this some time ago, but I've yet in my true fashion I've yet to open the box, and I finally got it open so let me adjust the camera here folks excuse me all righty uh, a little bit lower 
So I'll have to move it again, but this is my new toy. And you're saying, so what? It's a Brad Nailer. Well, yes, except it's a composite Brad Nailer. Um, 15 gauge Brad Nailer does not normally come straight. Uh, it comes angled, and because they don't sell 15 gauge, well, if they do, they're very specialized. But this takes this wonderful set of composite nails. Composite meaning plastic, and it's a beautiful thing because uh, when you need to, first of all, these uh, these nails are. Uh, you can hear me fine, Dave. Yes, I can hear you. These these nail uh, composite nails are half the uh, shear strength and twice the tensile strength. What that means is the following. Allow me to demonstrate. You have uh, a piece that you want to hold down. I'll just align it to one of what I know is straight line, and I'll just uh, do one of this, one of this, one of this. Fact that you know it doesn't matter. I don't need to have that many in there anyway. Okay, so we have our we have our nails uh, in there. The shear strength, that's the pulling force, for those of you uh, unfamiliar with that fancy word, is double that of a metal nail. So it actually, if if you were to pull it, I could probably lift this this well, maybe not, but this eight hundred pound uh, C and C. The shear strength is half, and the advantage of that is, first of all, this thing is, I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. I'm, I'm shaking the entire table, um, and it, it's on casters, and the thing weighs half a ton, if not more. Uh, and then here comes the true advantage, as I pull out my trusty mallet, CNC mallet, and I put, I put too many uh, nails in. <laughs> But either way, you get the idea. Basically, I all I do is just hit it sideways, and and the nails will snap. This one sometimes they're left in here like this, no biggie, done. So it is in one sense it's a little messy if you're uh, if you're really if you really want a pristine spoil board. But uh, honestly, uh, this is you know, and uh, likewise on here. I'm assuming that all of you are going to use this on a yeah, use the chisel for that one. I'm assuming that all of you are going to use this on a uh, on the piece that you're not going to cut. In other words, you're going to cut in here, just nail outside of it. If you actually uh, nail in the center of it, that's fine too. I mean, uh, again, that all depends on whether you're going to finish your piece or not. You're not going to ruin a piece of wood by, sh by sticking a brad nail in it. Uh, allow me to, while, while we talk on a different subject, I'll go ahead and let me nail this on. And I'm going to start the machine and just leave it muted in filming uh, the uh, cutting another box uh, jig. But, uh, so... I'll, uh, okay. yeah, go, go on. Well, I was going to say, you, you won't even have to mute, will you? Because once you close that enclosure, you can't really hear it that well, can you? Yeah, that's true. I, I'm, I'm sticking a few extra brad nails in because I just did this earlier. Let me, uh, and just, just and by, by the way, there's, there's one big advantage that I failed to mention, which is let's say I happen to. Like in this case, this uh, sorry, this is where it's going to run. Let's say that V bit is going to go right through that, right through this uh, bit here. Well, guess what? Big deal. It's plastic. I mean, it's it's not going to hurt your bit. You're not going to damage anything. So, so that's a beautiful thing. I mean, uh, just yeah, I was going to say that's kind of what the what the big rage is about the composite nails is that you can use it to hold down your material and you don't have to worry about. Getting it with your bit. I'm just shooting a few extra because I've seen that. See, I'm I'm using very very. Uh, let's see, can we say crappy on YouTube? Uh, 
very crappy wood. And uh, obviously, this is just, I mean, it's going to tear apart. If it were normal wood, I would probably, uh, if it were plywood, I would probably, uh, my 15 hundredths or, I mean, 15 thousandths that I've left of a gap will not separate these two pieces. But I already went through this and all the pieces just separated. So. I imagine the melamine is probably fairly brittle, is it? Uh, any it is, it's exactly right. It's very brittle. Now, now, like I said, you don't have to do this because, but I'm, I'm just snapping off the little tops. Now, the, the nails that I got, this thing's available in two styles. It's available in the 15 gauge and in the 18 gauge. Uh, the reason why I got the 15 gauge is because uh, most of my stuff is three quarter. And I didn't think that the 18 gauge would, would suffice because the maximum height of the 18 gauge nail is one inch where here it's it's an inch and a half it'll shoot inch and a half nails this thing's going probably a quarter or maybe a little more into the uh, into the uh, into the wood and uh, into the spoil board I'm sorry so let me just go ahead and start. Is, the pro is that some a leftover IKEA project? I see the letter D. On the yeah, <laughs> it looks exactly. like an IKEA. Well, project. what ha what happened was I built one of my daughters. I built them um, a custom uh, desk, and I took the old desk and I go, you know, hey, uh, if you've seen one of my earlier make room for hobby episodes, you will know that there is no such thing as scrap. Everything down to sawdust. Even sawdust you can glue together and, and use for something. So <laughs> keep everything. <laughs> Let me... Uh, all right. So basically what I do with my little... Uh, uh, I have my controller. Let me see if I put this over here somewhere. Excuse the... Uh, Bear with me, I'm trying to find a good place to mount this. So those nails only work in that particular model gun, um, or can you use it in any nail gun? Uh, well, that is, that, that's a very good question, because what originally... Um, hang on a second, my thing's moving by itself here. Oh, no, here it is. <sighs> Goodness gracious. My kingdom for a proper tripod. Originally, I bought just the nails because I'd read all over the internet that if you, uh, uh, there were a couple other nail guns that would shoot it. This is the case for the 18 gauge. The 18 gauge, I believe. The Hitachi and the and and definitely the Porter cable will fire the Senko 18 gauge Brad nails. That's the 18 gauge Brad nailer, uh, respect. The but I I made since I made the decision of getting the longer nails and they happen to be 15 gauge. Uh, the 15 gauge Brad nailers. There's not a single one that I found that shoots straight nails. And uh, the, the, at the time of, of this recording, the, uh, the nails themselves for a box of 2000, it's somewhere in the 40 to $45 range. And uh, for, uh, the, for the nailer itself, uh, $225, I believe, is what I paid. I'm not 100% sure of it. Uh, it's in the 200 to 230 range. Uh, and uh, Raptor sells one as well, but it's double the price. And um, they're the first ones that came out with it. Senko, for some reason or another, also came out with it. I, I don't know why more people... Well, more people don't do it because, really, what's the purpose? Well, actually, it's a, for woodworking, it's fantastic because you can hold your pieces together if they're painted pieces. If the nails are small enough, you could get plastic nails that you can stain over, like like uh, 3D 
uh, filament, and uh, they're not going to damage your your tools if you like a planer if you go over it. So, yeah, I, I would imagine that the people that are that came up with that are, are making the nails where they hope that they won't work with just any nail gun. So that way they can sell the nail gun too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, then this, that, that's exactly right. I mean, uh, at least the 15 gauge nails, definitely uh, the way they made these, they're, they're straight. And like I said, they don't, they don't work with the, uh, with the others. Now here's, uh, let me, let me show you what I'm going to do here with the, uh, as I start my machine, um, first, first, the first process I normally do is I look for my wonderful joystick here and, uh, now in my case, since I'm making these boxes, I'm actually going to, uh, zero on the surface of the uh, thing. I have my I have my already hooked up with a nice heavy duty coiled cord. It's it's hooked up to the uh, the thing, my zero touch plate. And then all I got to do is just hover over to the uh, and click as all of you do touch top. So for those of you completely new to CNC, uh, if you ever get a touch plate, that's what it does. It just measured zero on the board here, and it knows the length of the tool in, in my particular case. Uh, now, I'm going to zero out. Um, I turn on the laser, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully you can see the laser there. Yeah, it shows up. Yeah, okay, good. So then uh, I just simply hover the laser over the... Now, the laser is offset from the actual tool. And I'll just uh, I'll zero it right there on the edge of the board a little bit further up, just in case so I don't do any more damage to my... <laughs> and then, uh, so then... When I click on uh, laser X zero Y zero, what it does is it in one fell swoop it zeros X and Y, moves the bit right over X uh, X zero Y zero, and uh, turns off the laser. So I'm ready to start. I've got my X, my Y, and my Z. I'll just click start. if I open a file. Now, my machine in particular, it goes over the corner. And uh, let me see if I can set this over here. And I just do, uh, again, with a muscle chug, it's half a turn. I mean, a quarter turn. Boom. I take my old bit out. I put the, uh, I put whichever bit I'm going to use first, which in this case, it's going to be the, uh, the quarter inch end mill. And then hit enter. And the way I hit enter is on my joystick. It'll go over. And it will actually measure. Uh, this you guys can do it on your Gattons. I'm planning on uh, doing it on my Gatton. This particular touch plate is always it's fixed. It's a fixed height. So what it what it does is I have a little macro that will measure the bit. And the reason for this is uh, so I can let me go ahead and start the machine. And uh, mute it, or at least. 
mad. I don't mean. Sorry about the. I'll just cover this up for a second. <laughs> Looks like we were just in a car crash. Yeah, I I didn't want to. Um... Now my cord's all tangled. This is just one of those days. I you know the problem that I have is I don't have anywhere near enough hands to handle the uh, camera. Untangling it from the, uh, hang on a second. Untangling it from the uh, air hose. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> a little better. Uh, all right. So again, I'm set to start. This thing's just waiting for me to put the dust boot back on. I'm not going to put it on. And I just hit enter. It started the router bit. And it's going to router. Now, hopefully, that's not too loud for you. How's the... Uh, I don't, how's, I don't, think, uh, I don't think it's too loud. I don't know. You, you, you can always turn your volume down a little on your mic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Except I gotta let go of the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. Hang on. Let me see if I find a piece of tape. Uh, I keep them for a tripod. Well, while uh, while you're getting adjusted there, I'm gonna do a quick shout out here to the folks that are joining us tonight. Yeah. Uh, we got Jeff Connor. Jim Bashirs with Driveway Workshop, Portal Woodworks. How you doing, David? Uh, Keith Painter, uh, Jim Senecola's in the house tonight. Patrick's Workshop. How you doing, Patrick? Uh, let's see. It's Clyde. That's what it says. It's Clyde. Larry Duggar, the Wood Bucket. I believe is Gary Brady. I think I can never remember your name. I think it's Gary Brady. Uh, Steve Carmichael's in the house tonight. How are you, Steve? Uh, Josh Latta, Bubba Hogue. I saw earlier we had Matt Haas in the house. I don't know if he's still out there. Um, let's see, who else did I see? Yeah, much better. Folks, too. Uh, anyhow, appreciate y'all. Eugene Nolan, Dale Ludlam. Benji Long, Frankie CNC and Woodworking Channel. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Uh, I don't yep. think that's too loud, Javi. Uh, All me, right. Me, anyway, so I, th I think we're good. Uh, good. It's probably going to keep flipping the camera back over to it every time it gets a little bit louder, though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, basically, uh, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, unless you want to focus on it, which obviously... It, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'll vacuum it out in a little bit. But basically, right, what it's doing now is it's creating the first set of pocket holes, vertical and horizontal for that thing. Uh, and, then, and then it'll create the second set uh, shortly. I'll swap over to the V bit and it's going to do uh, four quick passes for, or eight actually, two passes each for the uh, bottom. And then uh, the fi finally the profile cut. And, uh, and then you could watch me knock that thing off. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very happy with the, with the particulars, with the, um, I, I, I was, I'm very happy with, the hole down. I mean, if, if you don't mind having a compressor ready, an air hose ready, um, you know, by the shop, it's it's a little more cumbersome. But uh, on the other hand, you don't have to glue. You don't have to waste super glue uh, for uh, and and like uh, or you don't have to worry about your router bit going through aluminum for through metal hole downs or or anything like that. Um, however, like we've said on, on many shows, there's no one hold down universal hold down method. Yeah. Is that an upcutting bit it's using the hub? Uh, 
<laughs> no, it's it's uh, it's a two flute uh, bit. Uh, I'm I'm using some older bits because I'm I mean I don't want to uh, waste. Uh, let me let me uh, vacuum a little bit over there. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I've got it locked on that view right there where we're watching it cut, and we'll uh, go ahead and open up the uh, the chat to questions. Um, about anything really CNC related, not necessarily about the um, what Javi's cutting, but if anybody's got any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the chat there. If we uh, if we don't know an answer, we'll we'll make up something, I guess. <laughs> um, David Battershell says, Javi, you might want to mount that camera with that nailer. <laughs> I see Larry, Larry Duggar was asking there where Javi got the cord for his touch plate. It is quite a, a nice little cord. I don't know yeah, how it had, it a, I guess it had a plug that plugged into the aluminum plate. Yeah, yeah. It looked pretty good. Yeah, see the uh, th this is this is a rather oh shoot hang on yeah this is uh, there we wait oh sorry I'm uh, wasn't sure if I was back on or not um, this is a um, uh, this particular model this uh, the cam master and and I'm again I'm I'm taking cues from from what I see in different designs from different machines and, and adding it to the, to the Gatton, which is the, the beautiful thing about a do it yourself uh, machine is, is, well, you could do anything that you, you find something comfortable. And uh, I'm very happy with the, the connection. It's uh, it's a thick coil. Uh, not, it came with the machine. However, it is nothing more than a coiled quarter inch to quarter inch connector. I'll show. I'll show you after the uh, after this thing cuts. I'll show you. It plugs into the box, to the controller box. They have drilled a hole, and uh, oh, by the way, the box that years ago uh, Mr. Gatton uh, helped design. By the way, because he was on the crew that uh, that uh, drew up that box. Anyway, the. Uh, it, obviously, it's, it's. You remember that? Uh, I oh I, I remember everything you say, Dave. Everything. <laughs> uh, the uh, it's a quarter inch plug, and a quarter inch plug on the inside of the box is wired to the proper breakout board. But uh, the the fact that it's uh, it's a very handy plug that you could just plug in and and uh, what I did was I'll show it to you after. Uh, it's in my Cam Master tour. If you've ever seen it on my channel, uh, it was uh, years ago. Uh, Dave invited me on 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 show number forty three, and uh, and we showed. Uh, I gave a tour of the Cam Master, and I've got a couple screws on the wall, and I just hang the the plate on. The plate is exactly half an inch uh, in thickness, which makes it easy for. For the uh, macro, not not that it matters. All you got to do is just measure it with a cattle purr and put a number in. But uh, you know, I I hate to sound critical, but that is one ugly ass piece of wood right there. Oh, it's horrible! It's horrible! It is! It is! It is not even <laughs> IKEA quality. I'm telling you that uh, you you're seeing when I when I the the piece I showed you all put together. I, I actually sanded the edges because look, look at that. I mean, I mean, I'm looking right here at the the very front of it to the near part of the camera, and there's like a big chunk and stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah. good lord, where yeah. where in the hell did you get that piece of wood? <laughs> they don't call it chipboard for nothing. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Yep. Hang on, let me. Uh... It's chip with a capital C. We still got another tool to go to, right? 
I know you're muted right now, but I thought I'd talk about something else while uh, while that's running. Yeah, I don't yeah, see yeah, absolutely. It's it's. Uh, whoop. I don't yeah. see any. Uh, Clyde Labonte. Okay, how you doing, Clyde? <laughs> Jim Bashirs wants to know: Does melamine always shed like a snake when you see and see it? Yes. Well, no. Actually, that depends on what you're using. I'm using an old. Uh, it, it does if the melamine you have is from 1973, Jim. Yeah. Like what and this, got there? This one's easily from. I, I in fact, this was one of my. Okay, so that's probably pre IKEA, right there. Okay, so this thing came back. And let me, uh... yeah, if you're cutting something like that, you need to use a uh, down cutting bit and it'll yeah, shear the, uh, the melamine yeah. on top, make that's, it look that's crisp. Exactly yeah, it's, it's trying to peel it off with like I think he used a straight flute, what he said, I think. Um, all right, I thought I would show something else here. There we go. Quick. I've uh, got the, uh, I'm just gonna switch over to the V bit now. And okay, while you're doing that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. oh, I'm put it on me and we'll talk about something else to get ready to sling okay. some more chips around. Um, I mentioned the other uh, last week or week four or whenever it was, I don't know, uh, on the show about how I was going, you know, we talked, uh, we've talked a lot about different uh, controllers, different uh, you know, stepper motors and drivers and stuff like that. And of course, you know, the big, the big deal now is Alatech doesn't have any steppers. And so he's not selling the complete plug and play kit that a lot of folks that buy GAT CNC's like to get just because it's simple it's plug and play. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to, build up a new controller and just for the sake of being able to use it on the show, I'm just going to mount everything on a board. Uh, and then maybe I'll build something around it after that. But what I'm going to do is I've got this. I mean, everybody knows what this is. This is one of the old, um, I say, old. it's, it's pretty old. He's had so many different, uh, you know, styles of this. I already got the screws out here. If I can get this, get this thing raised up here. Ah, come on. I shouldn't have pushed that back down on there. There we go. Uh, anyway, and I, you can tell I've already been messing in here and got, got a bunch of stuff loose. But this is the fairly old style. This is back when he was doing the two parallel ports here. And this is one I was I had on my Gatton CNC, and I don't – well, I think I do kind of know what happened. I think one time I had a brain fart, and I started shutting down the computer, and I shut it – you know, I shut it down so quick – and I still had the drive the this drive box turned on and it and it was still thinking it was doing something. Because when I when I closed Mach 3, it started making a you know just crazy loud noise. So I reached I thought, oh, I didn't turn the drive box off first like I always do. So I reached over there and shut it off. Well then when I come back the next day, I couldn't get anything to, to work. And I thought, well. This is pretty old anyway, so I didn't, you know, I had this whole other kit, the one that, again, not the latest one he used to sell in the metal box, but the one before that that came on the piece of plywood. I had one of those, separate motors and everything. So I just pulled this box out, threw that one in there, hooked it up, and got it going because I was, you know, I was out there trying to work. So I got it going and I just stuffed this one up on the shelf. Well, I forgot about it. And then I thought, well, I need to get this out and just see if I can figure out what's wrong. Well, I hooked it all up and, and apparently whatever that God awful noise was, it must've done something to this board. But 
I'm going to try to hold this up here where y'all can see it. But yeah, we've talked about the, I can't get it up. Let me see if I can turn my camera down a little bit. Yeah, maybe I cut the top of my head off. That don't matter. But this is what I used to put in, in these Xylotex. And you can see it's got the, the uh, heat sink glued to the back of it. But this is a little small board, but it's all four drivers right here. And so, you know, I don't know whether that was a proprietary thing that Jeff had made or what. I don't know. But anyway, I got to fooling around with it and I thought, well, you know, I'm going to build another controller because I want to be able to show folks how to wire up these other different kinds of drivers. And when you know it, I didn't bring one in here. But, you know, the kind of uh, talking about the stepper on line, uh, I think it's DM542 or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to use those. But I got thinking there's a lot of this stuff that I can use because when I turn this on, the fan, both fans still work. Not that they're great fans, but both these fans work. The, I took my meter and checked this power supply and it's putting out the right voltage. So everything works except for, like I said, something must have got fried on this board. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to kind of start with this and give me a piece of plywood and then start wiring stuff up. I'm going to take a lot of photos as I go so you can see exactly where each wire goes. Uh, you know, I'll have a, a, obviously have a breakout board on there and all that stuff. And just hopefully that will help some folks when they're wiring up this stuff. Because like I said, now that, you can't get the plug and play kit from Xylotex. You can't, you can still get, I think he's selling uh, everything but steppers for $185, I think it is. So you could still technically buy you some steppers from uh, Stepper Online or wherever you want to buy stepper motors. And as long as you buy roughly the same thing as what he used to put in those kits, you could buy that thing he's got. I think it's on a piece of plywood again. I don't think he's got it in a case. Um, and, you know, wire up stepper motors. You just have to make sure you get the right, if you're going to use those Molex connectors, that you get that set up correctly. Um, and then you could use it or like i said i think a lot of people are or uh you know trying to find these other kits and stuff and i know a lot of times from my own experience i know a lot of times the documentation on them really sucks um it's not very good so i'm going to try to build one up i'll have it on a piece of plywood or something where you can see how every wire goes we'll do a show where we talk about all the different connections and stuff and like i said i'll take pictures um of the different steps so that you can clearly see because that was my thing is when you're trying to look at somebody's pictures you might see a wire and it's connected you see where it's connected on this end but you don't know where it is on the other end so i'll try to make that clear and have stuff like that on the website, stuff like that. So hopefully that will help some folks. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite a big fan of the Gecko drives, the G540. I've got my spare one here. And again, they're a complete hold on, hold breakout on. board. Like it, Peter. Let me get it locked on you here. Okay, yeah, hold up. Yeah, that's a very nice, uh, very nice setup there. Yeah, it's a complete breakout board. Your parallel port connects here or your... Um, UC100 or your um, UC300 or your smooth stepper, whatever you want to drive it with. Uh, you got four um, stepper drives there, uh, just four wires to each, and you just add a resistor. It sh again, it shows a drawing there, it shows a resistor between pin one and five, uh, and that just sets the current for your drive. And just on the back, 
Uh, you got power in and uh, uh, e-stop connects there. And then you've got also um, outputs for driving relays. You can just drive a relay directly on there and also connect straight to your VFD um, if you want to connect, connect that and drive it um, through an analog connection. So it's an all-in-one um, unit that is really easy to uh, uh, to use and connect, and they're virtually bulletproof. Uh, uh, yeah, I kind I kind of like that that and also the uh, uh, Lead Shine forty six sixty or X MX forty sixty. I can't remember what it is. Something forty six sixty. I think uh, is like that. It's like the, it's like a all four axes are right there in one thing. Yeah, the Lead Shine is the forty six sixty. Yeah, um, I, I kind of like that. Um, you know, when you start using the other drivers, they work great too. And again, I didn't bring one in here, but y'all know what I'm talking about. The, the um, DM542, I think is what it's called. Um, there's, there's a lot of protection built into this as well. And while I don't recommend it, you can actually disconnect the step into the motors while, they're actually, while it's all powered up and everything. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't recommend actually doing it. But um, a, a lot of stepper drives will um, get real upset by that and destroy their outputs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this thing here, like I said, it's virtually bulletproof. It'll shut down if there's any issues. And um, this is an old one. This is a version 2. They're only out to version 8 uh, for, for this here. Yeah. And I've, so I've been using mine for about eight years for, since yeah. they first came out, basically. Yeah, really good. Yeah, and mm -hmm. there was, uh, let's see, Tim Jackson says G540, that's what he uses, great unit. Um, Don Puckett uses that, I think. Todd HC, and see a bunch of folks out there using that. Um, now, Peter, you use the, uh, you have to refresh my memory, because I, I know you've done videos about Mach 3 and UC, C, and C, but you usually use the UC, C, and C. Is that correct? Yeah, I've decided to to stick with the UC, C, and C for the time being. Um, Mac 3 is a bit, a bit old. Uh, it's not being developed anymore, so that's sort of why. Um, and, and, and UC, C, and C is basically the same. It has all the same functionality that um, Mac 3 has. And I'm just sort of enjoying it a little bit more. So... Yeah, that's, there, that's my personal there was reason. Fred uh, in the in the Facebook group uh, asking about you know Mach three and and UC CNC and there I, I mean I don't know of anything that UC CNC does that Mach three doesn't do. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they all pretty much do about the same thing. It's just um, you know and. I, I was commenting on that, that thread that one thing you got to remember, if you're brand new starting out, you know, you look at the UC, CNC, you know, whether you're at that, what is that company? I think it sells at CIF, um, something for CNC. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, it'll be like 60 bucks for the software, but you got to remember that that software that 60 bucks is just, that's basically the license fee. You still not need to buy either the UC 100, the UC 300 or the UC 400, or, you know, you have to get yeah. one of those. And then the license is using the serial number of whatever those devices you buy. So that's right. Yeah. You know, so for somebody new, I don't want them to go look and say, oh, that, that software is only 60 bucks. Mach 3 is 175 It's really about the same by the time you, you know, add it all up. Well, like I say, you got to have one of those other things to make the the UCC and C a full-blown version. Otherwise, it's just them. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's right. You've got to have your, um, uh, yeah, you've got to have a UC... Yeah, 100 or 300 to actually work with it. And it is, as you say, keyed to that particular uh, unit. Uh, so if, if, like you, I know you've got multiple uh, UC100s uh, on multiple machines. 
So you can't move from one machine to the other. You've got to have a license for each of those machines, well, whereas with Mac well, 3. Actually, my, my favorite combination, and, and it's what I use, is I use Mach 3, but I also have a UC100 mm -hmm. on every machine. But I was telling somebody that if I if I was, you know, couldn't afford to buy all those UC100s, using it with Mach 3, you can take the same one around to every, every machine, as long as you're using Mach 3. But if you're using the UC CNC, you can't do that. It, it you have to have the right UC one hundred or whatever with yeah. whichever one that was licensed for. So uh, I'm, I'm all set over here, Dave. Uh, I just I basically I mean I took these things and I you know I just I, I whacked them to 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 pull these off. Um, and again, if it since it is melamine, it's it's just weak as as heck. But uh, all you gotta do is just is whack them again like Keith is saying I'm, I'm playing whack here with this but uh, you know there's my yeah my I guess I think we got a proof of concept there even if it, yeah, it, it's, it's, the, it's it's not the best it's it's not the best uh, system for everything but if you were making because this is I mean because this is a lousy example but uh, Especially with the, uh, <laughs> I don't think you're going to make Andy Klein jealous with that one. That's... No, no, no. Well, the thing is, yeah, exactly. Well, no, that's well. That's there's another point. Is that uh, first of all, with as regarding the, <clears throat> take this off here. Regarding regarding the um, tool. Regarding the the thing I made. Uh, if you have very sharp bits and you're doing it on plywood and you're very precise, and that's an awful lot of varies, uh, uh, that, that's a lot of work just to make a box. So you better be making a few hundred of them. Uh, but as far as, uh, as far as we, my, we have a I, question, we have a question from Patrick's. Oh boy. Here we go. Make sure you see it. The Patrick. The and and Patrick's yes, if, if he came in late. And he's asking a question about this hammer. I'm just going to completely ignore him. He didn't mention the hammer. He just wants to know why the heck did you use particle board? <laughs> it's 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 chipboard, not particle board. Particle board, actually, it's it's just bigger particles. I call it crap board myself. It is pure crap. But you know what? I did didn't cost me a cent. <laughs> Yeah, and it's worth every penny you pay. It's for. worth every penny. It's 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 a bad example, but the point was just to show you how this thing comes off and on. If you were to, for instance, uh, if you were to do a um, um, a sign of any sort, and including the let me put this back here. If you were to do a sign and you use your uh, your tabs, or even if you don't do use your tabs, but if you were to use a sign and and shoot these things on the outside, this this thing's fantastic. I mean, I've done it. I've done it already on a couple of uh, of little signs. I did. Uh, I don't remember where I left it, but uh, it's fantastic. It really is. It's it's very very handy. And I could just knock the stuff off. So if you're doing multiple signs and things like that, uh, but if you're doing something uh, like like this, where where it's not one piece, you have to you have uh, you have an intricate piece that that cuts into each other. Forget it. Uh, if you're doing something with a lot of little pieces, well, I would suggest. Uh, I'd have mixed feelings about it because on the one hand, it's very simple going chunk, 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 and just knocking all the nails into, uh, like in, in your case, you're building the CNC. All you got to do is knock a nail into each of the things. The problem is you're not going to get the pristinely clean piece of wood because now you got a nail in the thing, uh, even plastic or not. So, uh, you know. It, it all it all depends if if I was going to do a lot of pieces and paint them 
I, I'd have no hesitation to use this because I could just knock off the chips, put a little wood filler, and it's uh, in the long run, it's faster than a bunch of hold downs, which cause at, end up causing me a lot more problems than, than anything else. Um, I'm sorry. I'm old school. I love my hold downs. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. They're, they're yeah, I must admit, they're I like my, oh, sorry, <laughs> I was going to say, I really like my vacuum table. That's, you got yours built, yeah. Now, now that, now that is a, is a, uh, is, is, uh, that, that's probably, I'll do that project one of these days soon. I got to uh, take a look at Peter's videos on vacuum tables because that's one thing that I'm, uh, that I guess I'm jealous of because I'd love to have one of those uh, for the table. Yeah. I, I want to mention, just kind of getting off the subject here, but we were talking about the UC 100s and stuff mm -hmm. a while ago. I want to I want to mention one more time because I know we got a good crowd out there watching. If you go to get one of those things, please, please, please be careful and don't buy one off of eBay or one of those things that even though it may say UC 100 on there. And it'll say that it works with Mach 3 and everything. If it's not at least a hundred bucks, it's not going to work. It's a knockoff. You know, I've, I've had so many people that, you know, I was trying to help somebody the other day and, you know, he was having all kinds of problems. I'm, you know, he said he had a UCCNC and I go, well, did, where did you get it? And he said, oh, I got it off of eBay and he sent me the link and it was a, one of those knockoffs. So, you know, this hobby, I know everybody tries to keep costs down, but some things you just can't skimp on. And that's, that's one of them, you know, go to, go to, to the, uh, that C4. Oh, uh, what the heck was it? Somebody put it up there. Don, help me out. He put it up there a while ago. It was PC for CNC. I think it that's was. it. That's yeah. it. PC, PC for CNC. CNC. Yeah. Go to that website and you can get the real deal or you can find it on Amazon. But it's going to be about, a, or I think right now the last link I put on there was about 108 bucks. I got a link down below, uh, but but they're still over 100 bucks. Uh, they used to be around 115 when I I bought two or three of them at that price. Uh, now they're down around 108 or nine dollars. But yeah, if you think you you run across a good deal, and you know because you got it and it's only 50 bucks. You're you're just throwing that fifty bucks away. So watch out for the fake stuff. It's it's a shame that you have to worry about stuff like that. But you mean the fake? Uh, they sell UCC and C knockoffs. Yeah, if you look on eBay, oh. they don't even. They're you know how the the real ones have the gray plastic body. Well, these have a little nicer metal case. I mean, and, you know, and I've seen them where they have a UC one hundred sticker on it, like they're like. But they're not, they're never sold by um, PC, 4 CNC. When you go to Amazon, like I said, you can find them on Amazon, but you want to make sure that the seller is either CNC drive or that PC, 4 CNC. Because anybody else is going to be a fake one. Especially on eBay. I, I, I don't even, I can't believe people still use eBay. I haven't bought anything on there in years yeah it's yeah. all you never know what you're gonna get they don't describe it the way it really is and all that but yeah anyway just be careful of that go go for the real deal yeah i mean i will say this uh because i was associated with ebay for a while they have a fantastic return policy they they pretty much favor the side of the uh of the buyer however that's just you got to go through the trouble so i agree with you there it's, uh, who uses ebay yeah for, for most things i do yeah <laughs> i still buy stuff with ebay but i've moved mostly to aliexpress now which is probably almost as bad but um how is yeah. aliexpress i always uh what i like about it is the money is actually held in escrow until such time as it arrives and you say it's arrived and then so Ooh. it's sort of well, at least that's my understanding of it anyway, because they, they track and, um, right. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got stuff here I ordered. Uh, okay, because when, when, when I first, driver. not to get off subject for too long, but when I first started looking at AliExpress, I thought it was just some alien 
uh, uh, hard to. I didn't realize it was as easy to use as, as eBay or Amazon or something that, like that. You got to keep in mind that Peter, living in New Zealand, doesn't have a lot of the same options we do. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Amazon. You mean you mean Peter? You don't have an Amazon warehouse next to you where you can get most of your items within an hour? Mm, that's right. Yeah, I, I wait about a month for my stuff. <laughs> We've got uh, we got a couple of questions over there. Dave Matthew says a non electronics question, which is yep. right at my that's in my wheelhouse because I'm not an electronic guy. What is a good spacing for T track? Six inches apart, good. I think that's a little far for yeah. I've I've had them that far, and I've had to make custom clamps that are longer because I can't reach on one side or something like I, that. I put mine. Uh, the ones I have on my table now from center of T track to center of the next one is four inches. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I, I wouldn't I, uh, want them any farther apart than that. If, if you'll notice on this machine, I have the uh, T tracks. Uh, um, I think one of them is 12 inches apart. Another one is six and stuff. They never fall in the right place. Never. Uh, so, so yeah, definitely four inches is, is optimal. And mine again, mine's the same. Mine's about six inches apart, and it is it is too far. Although I have actually toyed with the idea of having um, start with a wide track and sort of half the distance between each one after that, so that you can pl you can place it somewhere. If that makes sense, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could get a position there where your piece actually fits properly on the table. Okay, uh, another uh, another question. Now we're getting some questions in here, but when it's, we're past nine o'clock, uh, what's the difference between UC one hundred and UC three hundred? I'll give you the easy answer, and then I'll let Javi and Peter give the technical answer. the The UC one hundred has about a I don't know four or five foot USB cable. And then it goes into that little controller and it has the parallel connection and that's it. It doesn't have any other pin connections or anything. The UC 300 and the 400, I believe they do. Now you guys can follow up and add more to that. Yeah. The um, UC 300 has five parallel ports built into it, although only two of them are capable of um, being used for, uh, driving stepper motors and things. Um, the UC300 came in two different flavors, the USB and the Ethernet one, but I think they got rid of the USB one. I could be wrong on that. Um, they, they the UC400's uh, definitely only Ethernet. And, um, yeah, you see, so with the Ethernet ones, you've got to power them with 5 volts. Uh, well, for the UC300, and I think 12 volts for the 400. Don't quote, quote me on that one. Um but yeah, both the UC four hundred uh, that actually has two uh, two parallel ports as well. So basically, it's it's a double UC one hundred, really. Yeah. Yep. That's so it, so it kind of correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but you you can kind of not have to have a breakout board if you use that because you've got the the pin. No, you you don't need a oh. The, the UC300, actually, if you look at it, and uh, well, the 400, that you actually get a, a ribbon cable that takes you out to a, uh, a D25 plug okay. which you then put into your breakout board. So it's basically the same as the UC100. Uh, the UC300 uh, is actually only a very small board. Uh, it's, it's not very big at all. And you have to put that. All it has is pins on it. It's basically got a big version of something like this. Um, and you had to put that on another board, which was a mistake I made when I originally ordered mine. Uh, I had to bring it out to an expansion board, and, and lucky that I think I brought off uh, PC for CNC. When I brought mine, they pointed out to me at the time of ordering that, hey, you, you, you also need another board to go with it. And there are a range of different boards. You can uh, plug your UC300 into them. Some of them are full-blown breakout boards, and some of them are like mine, uh, which basically just gives you a place to plug a ribbon cable in to bring it out to a D25 uh, parallel connector. Yeah. 
And the the other three ports on the UC uh, 300 are used for inputs. So you, there's masses of inputs available on a UC 300. And uh, it also has an analog, uh, MP, has an MPG port and uh, other ports built into it as well. So, yeah. And of course, one thing we didn't mention is there's a price difference between the UC 100. I always talk about the UC 100 because that's the cheapest way you can get into one is they're about a hundred and like I said, about 109, 10 bucks, something like that. I don't even know what the other ones cost right now because I haven't looked. I think it's 125 for the 400 off the top of my okay. head. Okay, well, that's not too bad then. It's not isn't much. too bad considering you get two parallel ports out of it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. We had a question. Uh, what's your favorite hold-down method? Man, they're all good. Um, I like, you know, I like because I got the T-track four inches apart, as I mentioned earlier. I like using my clamps, and I use my clamps that are cut out of scrap plywood or scrap hardwood. I even made my knobs and use a T-nut in there. Yeah. Uh, just a quarter 20 bolt that, you know, goes in the T-track. They're cheap. They're free, basically, because uh, I can make them every time out of a little window of the skeleton that it, that's left. I can run some more so i use those a lot they don't always work for everything sometimes you need to use you know i know a lot of folks don't like double-sided tape but that still works pretty good there's of course the uh vacuum table vacuum table and there's the the ca glue and in, in painter's tape method and in my case for most of the three-quarter stuff i i use the cam clamps yeah cam clamps so uh, there's just there's a bunch of different ones and they're all they're all good. I mean, if it holds it down and nothing goes flying around, that's that's all you need it to do. Mm -hmm. um, what is a good cheap piece to make test runs? Well, don't use that stuff hobby use. No, <laughs> uh, we can tell, we can tell you what not to use. Uh, I don't know. What you got laying around? Ply, oh, a lot of oh. plywood's good to, for running a test or cheap mm -hmm. pine. You know. Yeah. All, all, all kidding. All kidding around. The first piece, test piece that I ever did was actually on melanine because because I was I was testing feeds and speeds and the edge of the melanine. But uh, if you were to ask me that question, I would say. Uh, test it on a piece of whatever wood you're about to cut, because that's what's gonna that's what's gonna determine um, how it, how it reacts. Well, if it yeah, if the test piece is to determine feeds and speeds, I'd say yeah, try to use the same material. But yeah. if you're just testing a design, oh yeah, you know MDF, or, you know V carb or whatever, best. then then pine or plywood or pretty much yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Pine. Yeah. Pine or plywood or, or get a bunch of cheap scrap. Uh, stay away from MDF. I joke about MDF, but stay away from MDF. Cause, uh, well, number one, if you don't have a vacuum system, uh, consider your shop, uh, caked with a, with a millimeter of dust everywhere. Uh, and, uh, and if you do it, you're still there. MDF is very harsh on bits. It dulls bits very quickly. It's nothing but glue for the most part. Dust and glue. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any other questions there. Um, no, I don't see anything else. I guess we'll uh, get ready to sign off here. Uh, Rob Hampton. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can see the chat, Peter. If you can, I'll read this. Rob Hampton, who I believe is in Australia says that the UC 300 ETH is $160 to $698 US dollars on CNC4 PC. Yeah, yeah, I just replied there. Um, yeah, the $160 will more than likely be for the UC 300. But as I mentioned, it's only a, a, a tiny little um, board 
like that, okay. you then need to break, bring it into uh, some sort of uh, board, uh, a breakout board. So uh, I think the breakout board I brought was about 29 US dollars, and that basically just brings it out um, to a, a place where I can then plug in expansion cables. Um, but some of the more, ex uh, there are other boards that are far more sophisticated, they have relays and breakouts for everything, and uh, very, very sophisticated, and, and of course the price um, raises yeah. for that. Um, yeah. Whereas the UC, I like the, I quite like the UC four hundred because it's it's already made for you. It's got that nice uh, aluminium uh, mounting plate. It's got the Ethernet port where you can get at the damn thing. Um, well, that's the other thing. The UC, uh, oh no, hang on. The UC three hundred actually does have the Ethernet port on its on the actual on its own board. Um, but yeah, the the the, the UC four hundred I think was one twenty five, um, and it's virtually ready to go uh, you just got to get those little ribbon cables to suit your um you know with the d25s uh to plug into your um uh parallel port on your on your um machine yeah okay um they want to hear you uh, say, yeah. they want to hear you say yes, keith <laughs> i can say aluminium aluminium or aluminum well, uh, there's actually uh, there's actually two different spellings, so both are correct. So uh, that that debate of the UK versus versus America, it's uh, uh, we actually say aluminum because there's no I in our aluminum. There is an yeah. aluminium. Yeah, and you know, yeah. I, I've worked around a lot of people that aren't from here. And if they say aluminium, I don't, it doesn't even phase me because I know exactly what they're talking about. Uh, they probably are curious about say aluminum, but what, what I'm curious about is why Americans say solder instead of solder because there are very few words with silent L's in them. Yeah. yeah. We, say, we say a lot of stupid stuff. I don't know where solder <laughs> came from. I've always, again, I've always said solder, and it's it's almost like it's S O D D E R or something. Yeah, uh, but I, I I can't. I mean, I I can't criticize anybody because I live in a city where plywood, by eighty percent of the people, is pronounced playboo. All right, we got we got a couple more questions here. I want to get to before we get out of here. Uh, Dave Matthews, who is uh, not only has a great band, but is just finished building the Gatton CNC, I think. And he's asking, uh, what's good starting point speeds and plunge rates for the new Gatton PC9 690 router, quarter inch spiral bit, or half, uh, half inch 90 degree V bit? Well, um, you want the quick answer or the long answer? Well, here's, <laughs> here's what I would recommend, David. Always, when you're programming stuff, whether it's with VCAR Pro or what, whatever you're doing, and you're brand new at this, always be very conservative. Go shallow. Go go a sixteenth deep deep. And then when you realize and you look at it and you go, man, that's cutting that like hot butter. I could probably could have went an eighth thing. Then you next time you go an eighth or whatever. As far as the speed, if you're using Mach 3 or UC CNC and probably pretty much any other software to control it, you can bump it up on the fly as you go, the speed. And, you know, you bump it, you know, what I've always told people, you bump it up till you start to hear it chatter and then you back off about 10 or 15%. And, you know, that's, I don't like trying to tell people what feeds and speeds and stuff to run because that's something you really need to learn yourself. And I'm not, that's not a cop out. I mean, I could give you, yep. some, but it's just something you're going to have to learn yourself. Everybody does it. Uh, yeah, it, it's you'll, machine you'll dependent. Probably know when you're going too fast and too deep because you'll either snap off a bit or stuff yep. will start smoking. Or every machine is different. Every bit is different. Every piece of wood is different. Uh, every every power output. I mean, are you running a 16th inch or a or a 0 0.022 fret bit? Uh, you're going. You got to crawl. Go to a crawl. Or are you running a um, you know, a a, a half inch thick. A half inch shaft, quarter inch uh, upcut where you could just fly right through it or a V bit. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so the short answer is 
start conservative, especially on the plunge. Keep, I, I never go much more than 20 uh, inches per minute on a plunge. Um, yep. But that's just me. Um, yeah, 20 on a plunge, yeah, 80, to, 80 to 120 on feeds. And if you break a bit, well, you know you got to go slower. Yeah, or calorie. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> All right, yeah, we got I, um, uh, I'm sorry, Peter. Go ahead. Oh, well, sorry. What I was going to say is, what I do is, I, I, um, I always set my uh, spindle speed to 10,000 RPM, and uh, usually my feed rate's about 100. And uh, because I'm using those figures, I know that each time I increment my uh, feed rate or speed rate by 10%, I'm going up a thousand, up or down a thousand RPM in spindle speed. And up and down um, ten inches a minute. Uh, and here, for and every, here's, uh, increment. Here's the other important consideration: how much are you taking off each pass? Peter? Yeah, I usually go uh, half the depth of um, of my router bit right. diameter. Yeah, basically, is, he mentioned he was going to use a Porter cable six ninety. Well, that's not variable speed, so you're at like what mm. 24, 25, 27,000, whatever that, that runs wide yeah. open. Yeah. yeah, I also occasionally use this app here um, for uh, this from U US Router Tools. It's available for both Apple and um, Android. Mm -hmm. uh, gives you a good idea. You can, it has different material types. Uh, you can select what material you're using, how many flutes you you're using, what speed your router is running at. Yep. And uh, it'll give you a, a good – what material you're cutting, uh, it'll give you a good starting point to where you should be looking anyway. Uh, but, again, it de it's all the machine dependent. It's um, – there's so many variables. So it's, again, like Dave said, that's more why than a starting you point. don't give it out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to get to everybody's question. There was one that's already scrolled off, but I'm going to get back to it. It was Craig Bates, so you all help me remember Craig Bates' question. But uh, Dave Matthews, yes, 40 inches a minute is – that's plenty conservative enough. And usually my rule of thumb is if I'm going to use a quarter-inch bit, I usually start off somewhere less than half that diameter. So half that diameter is going to be an eighth. So if I start off at a sixteenth or um, – um, I can't even think what the next thing is, but you know, somewhere in there, you know, you know, you, you're probably going to be okay. And like I said, you'll know if it cuts really good and you say, man, that, that router is not laboring at all. I could probably go deeper or faster or maybe both. You just have to play around with it. And, and again, yep. you can play with the speed by bumping it up on the fly. So you can figure out your feed rate pretty quick. Now, when you depth, you got to go in and repost it or whatever to change the depth. But um, yeah, if you're 40 inches a minute and use a quarter inch bit and go on even an eighth inch, you, you should be plenty good on pretty much any material. Yeah. Your eyes and ears are the best tool. Yeah. Uh, Use your eyes and ears to judge. The, the, question that had scrolled off that I want to make sure I get I to see it there. Uh, Craig, do, do, people. do many people use the Gatton CNC to mill aluminium? Aluminium. Or aluminum. Peter has. I have. You have. Uh, uh, quite a number of people have. Uh, yeah. And this is what I, you know, it's, it's funny he asked that question because I, I'm going to tell you all something here in just a little bit. Um, I always try to tell people, you know, really anything, you know, an X carve, a shape oak, anything will cut aluminum. It's how fast you can cut it and how deep you can cut it that, that matters. Uh, and of course, the Gatton CNC, although it's relatively beefy and especially if you got a spindle on it, I've cut aluminum before uh, without any issues, but. If I was going to cut aluminum regularly, I would invest in a mill. And I got to tell you, I got the hankering to get a mill. <laughs> I just yeah. saw, I'll be look up. Um, I've been watching some. I've been watching some videos. Uh, watched a lot of Bill Griggs videos. 
there's a fairly inexpensive mill called a Grizzly G0704, which is very popular. And there's even kits to convert it to CNC where there's people that there's a, a guy that I think sells the parts. Um, they swap out the Acme screws with ball screws and, um, you know, it, it, a bunch of people have done it. So it's kind of got me the, gave me the fever a little bit. Uh, and I'm wanting one, but I don't know what I'll end up with. I'm really not, I'm really not looking forward to doing the tinkering part where you have to take it all apart to swap all that stuff out to make it see. I'm almost thinking I'd rather spend the money and get, get one that's already CNC. But so how, how much would we expect the new aluminum Gatton CNCs to, to, to run? I haven't run the numbers yet, but you can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to make anything anything real nah. big. I, but I've always, you know, that's part of the reason. Remember back when when I got the the 3D printer, and it was fun because you know because I've always well at least yeah. the last several years drawn in 3D and modeled in 3D. So it was fun to be able to model something up and then send it to the thing and do it on a 3D printer and all. The only problem is for me with a 3D printer is it's still plastic. I want to make stuff tough. You know, I want aluminum and steel and that kind of stuff. And so they do sell a titanium 3D printer, you know, Dave. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But I can imagine how slow it must go to, I don't know. I just, I've, I've thought about a mill before, uh, my biggest problem is space, but now I've been looking at these, like I said, the footprint on these isn't real big and I'm going to do some thinking and seeing if I can, I may end up having to have a clearance sale and sell a bunch of stuff in my garage. Uh, Cause I got two, you know, I got two CNC's in, in my garage right now that I could probably do with that one, but we'll, but we'll see. Now let's see. There was another question in here somewhere. Uh, I get. I don't see anybody in the chat saying that they mill aluminum. So maybe. Yeah, uh, we had one, but with a with an actual mill. I mean, he had a bench mill. Okay, I want to answer a couple more questions. We got. Uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Tim says, "Are all power cable routers? I think he means Porter cable routers outside diameter the same? No." The, they make uh, a compact router. That their model yeah. is four, uh, Porter Cable 450. It's the same. It's actually the exact same thing as a DeWalt 611, just different colors. And it yeah, doesn't the, have the variable speed. It's a uh, one sp speed for, for everything. But the 690 and the 890 series, the 8901, 8902, and the 890 and the 690, they're all the same. They're all the three, three, three and a half inches. Three and a half. And then you can get the big boy, which I have one of those. It's a 75, 18. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, it's four and a quarter inches diameter. I think. Yes. Yes. It's four and a quarter. Uh, but that's why when you buy a Gatton CNC kit, the mount that I cut for it is a three and a half inch diameter because there's probably more full size routers, not just Porter cable, but some Bosch and DeWalt's and stuff like that, that are, um, three and a half, uh, diameter body also. So that's, that's why I went with that, that size. And that's a good, that's a good router to start with like a six tiny. It's like one and three quarter horsepower. So that's, that's a good one to, to start with. Let's see here. I think, was there another question? It's uh, four inches yeah, even, well, by the way. It was uh, 75, 18, four inches. Okay, four inches. Yeah, I knew it was uh, 4.2, Don P says. Yeah, 4 .2. I, I was thinking it was over four because I remember I, it was kind I of just, I just read. I just read on the Porter Cable side. I guess they're wrong. Okay. Uh, Robert Smith uh, had a question. Is there a particular startup and shut down sequence? That's the other uh, yeah, question. Uh, 
Go ahead. There, there isn't from the G540, but I don't know about the uh, the ones you guys use. Well, I've had people tell me they they do it a different way. Personally, I always start the computer and you know turn it on, get Mach three running, and then I turn on my drive box. Um, yeah. And I do the I shut it down in reverse order, except when I screw up. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that's what did that board in. Uh, okay. when I shut the computer or exited Mach 3 and the thing was still on it and made a god awful shaking racket and that, yeah I, I that, always I always make sure the machine is on prior to the computer and make sure it's off after the computer because once or twice I've made the mistake of uh, the learning mistake of uh, running a program and I I heard the vacuum. I heard the uh, the sound of the VFD, but I didn't realize the controller wasn't on, uh, and it 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 did nothing. And one time the VFD wasn't on, and I almost broke my bit running it through the uh, through the piece. So ever since then, I've developed a habit of always turning on all the other accessories first, prior to the computer, and then turning them off after. But I mean, it really makes no difference. Okay, Larry Duggar says, will you please answer Robert Smith's question? Let me find where Robert Smith came. Oh, that was that was the one we just answered on the, oh, okay. uh, the oh, start of a shutdown sequence. Okay, okay. Like I said, I've had people tell me they turn it on the other way, and I'm like, well, okay. But, you know, if you have good luck. With it, <laughs> if you David. Up, David Jones would like to know if he orders a Gatton kit, does he get to visit Gattonville and get served barbecue? Um, it's quite possible. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you happen to order it before the Wood Show and you go pick it up Saturday evening on the Wood Show, I'll pay for your barbecue. A lot of times when when there's a customer visit, there is barbecue involved. <laughs> Most I of the time. Martin. I see Todd H C and C says a PM-25 MV milling machine, 1699 Precision Matthews. Yeah, I, I watched a few videos. Uh, I've been running my, my Gat and CNC all day, cutting kits. I've had a bunch of orders lately. But I've been in the living room watching YouTube videos about mills while my thing runs, and I got my tablet set up with the camera. Uh, but there was a guy who did a good video where he had uh, the Grizzly G0704, and he had already converted it to CNC, and he also had just purchased the Precision Matthews, the model you're talking about, the PM-25MV, and he was doing a review comparing uh, both, and actually he said he liked the Precision Matthews more than he did the Grizzly. It's Clyde uh, says he always shuts down the controller first and pits it. Yeah, it just makes sense to do it that way to me. Barbecue and beer. Uh, they don't have beer at that place, and I'm not much of a drinker. Mm. Um, yeah, I know, David. I cut it today. Sweet. Um, yeah, I had, I had several I had to cut today, so the old... The old machine out there got to work out today. All right. Did we miss any questions? I don't think so. Uh, all right. I appreciate uh, all of you guys that have tuned in tonight. We've had 70 or 80 people watching. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in. If you like the show, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a thumbs down. I see a couple, already got a couple of those. So, um, don't make any difference to me. It's all the same. Uh, let's, oh, here, let's see what is he saying. I have to have the VFD on before mock or it is not detected, but I turn the drive box on after mock three. Yeah, my set my setup's a little different. I showed it before. I think Javi made me a I call it a wired remote uh, where it's 
uh, it's just on a magnet and it's, it sits on in front of my machine and it's got a power on button. Well, I won't say power on a button to turn the spindle on and then it's got the pot there to adjust the speed. So it's right there at my fingertips. I can set it, whatever. But as far as turning my VFD on, I have a switch on the front of my, my machine that I flip and it does a contact breaker which then puts power to both the vfd and my submersible pump in my highfalutin five gallon bucket of water i got behind my machine so that yeah, way it, it depends on how you're driving it it, What's that? it, it, it sorry it depends on how you're driving it if uh, you're using rs485 the computer's got to detect that um before it'll run if you're running an ethernet controller um like the uc 300 or 400 that's got to be on otherwise when the computer starts it won't see or when you know your software starts it won't see the won't see the controller oh keith had a question about my touch plate earlier um uh, uh how does it work in short uh it is always at a fixed position and there is a macro um, that is run at the at every tool change, or actually at the beginning of every tool run, it will automatically run a macro which will take the bit over to the uh, you you zero it out first with whatever bit you have on the machine, and uh, at the beginning of the tool run, like like you saw, I'll change the bit. Now that I change the bit, the distance is different. It could be uh, higher, it could be lower. Well, it knows to go straight over. It remembers the, the distance, the last distance. Uh, it will go over and go to that one spot, detect the difference of, of the bit, plus or minus, and recalibrate the Z for that particular run. Then when it goes to the next bit and I change the next bit, it'll do the same thing. It'll go over, see the difference between the prior bit and this bit, and again, readjust the Z internally. Um, that's a simple way of putting it. It's all done with macros, and it's all just relative plus or minus Z. The advantage is that I have a touch plate for the Z, and then when I'm running multiple tools in one one tool path, multiple tools, it'll go over and it'll and it'll check the uh, it'll re-zero the heights based on that. It's a nice feature. If you don't have a uh, a uh, automatic tool changer bit, which I mean tool changer router, which I don't, because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we've wrapped up all the questions. I appreciate you guys coming up with those good questions. I definitely appreciate the thumbs up and, and appreciate y'all tuning in to watch. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Peter, who's, like I said, joining us from the future. It's uh, what, Sunday. Well, thanks for inviting me, Dave. <clears throat> well, you're, you know, you've got kind of a standing invitation. Any Anytime you want to come on, Peter, I know. Uh, you know, I know it's Sunday afternoon for you, so I don't know whether you're always available or not. But anytime you're available, uh, let me know and I'll send you a link. Uh, always good to have you on here. Uh, I guess that's it. Javi, thank you for our uh, nail shooting yep. demonstration. Uh, not at all. A couple hundred bucks, just an alternate, uh, alternate method of... Uh, of holding down and uh now you guys a uh review video review of that tool i, I assume I, in the near I future will be, i will be making one in the near future i've got three or four videos uh scheduled already so it'll probably be two or three weeks before that one comes out but yes are you going to do like a slow motion video of it of a bit running right through one of those things yeah it's not a bad idea i'll do that i think that would be cool yep yep I like I like the slow motion CNC stuff anyway because the the stuff just goes real slow the chips flying and all I like that. All right. So, 
All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I guess we're going to call it a night. I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. Um, I don't like to commit too far ahead because I don't know if I'll have time. Every time I say I'm going to do something, then I get busy with orders and I'm not complaining. That's a good problem to have. But then I don't have time to work on the, the other stuff that I was going to do for the show. But I'll try to get uh, get something started on that uh, controller thingy showing up the wire and stuff and uh i'll have that in the next week or so probably anyway thank you all for watching everybody have a great weekend and like i said don't forget about uh, little mckenna uh the uh, gofundme link is down below in the description um keep her in your thoughts and prayers and hopefully soon miter mike will be back to join us on the panel here so all right, everybody have a good weekend, and we will see you next week. Good night, everybody. Good night, see all. Bye.